over from above. And the rapture of your soul, the rapture of, of your of that is going to take place is from above. So every decision not to ascend spiritually is a decision not to be rapturable. Every decision not to ascend into the realms of God is a decision not to be rapturable. Jesus speaking, he said, in my father's house, there are many realms. So even our rapture is into diverse realms. Is somebody hearing that? Our rapture is to diverse realms. That means as a believer today, you are not supposed to die before you see heaven. Is somebody hearing something? You are not to die before you experience the realities of heaven. You are not expected to die to experience death. So within the body, as we are going to the limit of the body, in sanctifying, sanctification and purification, you are actually deciding to be rapturable. You are actually deciding to be rapturable. So when we begin to get to the limit of our flesh, the gift of his presence comes upon us. You must understand that Jesus is the gift of God to the world. Tell your neighbor, say, Jesus is the gift of God to the world. Invariably, what, the, what this actually means is that the gift of God to the world is to all men. Somebody say all men. The gift of God to the world is to all men. So no one is left out. The gift of God's salvation is to all. However, not all have received this. In Titus 2.11, it said the grace of God that bringeth salvation the grace of God that bringeth salvation. What is he speaking of? The Jesus Christ, the gift of God to the world. Jesus, the gift of God to the world, has appeared to all men. What he has shown to one, he has shown to all. Now, even if the Bible is making you understand that the salvation that you have received is not for you alone, but is for all. That you received it is what made you saved. That they did not receive it is not is what made them not to be saved. But in the realities of heaven, all men were saved by one salvation. Is somebody getting that? In Romans chapter 5, verse 12, he said, By one man, death came into the world. So all men took up death by the error of one. So by one righteousness is imputed into all but there must be an acceptance of the works of righteousness there must be an acceptance of what the works of righteousness so jesus established is the gift of god to the world if jesus is the gift of god to the world the bible said to them that believe it he give it what power to be what sons of God. Now, if you are a son of God, you are a gift to the world. If you are a son of God, you are what? A gift to the world. Now, your flesh and your weaknesses may cover your eyes, may limit your understanding, may trouble your perception of the realities of what you are to the world. But you must understand that the Bible said that Elijah is a man of like passion as you are. But Elijah commanded thrones. Elijah influenced a nation. A man of what? Like passion as you are. So everyone who is redeemed by God, who has accepted the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is a gift to the world. 
Why? God is not just in him. The gift of God is not just in him. God is also in him. The Holy Spirit is a gift of God to the church. Tell me, say the Holy Spirit is a gift of God to the church. Now, every child of God must have this understanding that the difference between you and a non-believer is the Holy Spirit. The difference between you and the people of the world is the Holy Spirit. It's not your good works and it's not their good works. There are people who have not met Christ who are better than you. Morally better, character-wise better, living standard better, academically better, positionally better. However, the difference is the gift of God to the church. The gift of God to the church is the Holy Spirit of God. Why? God's ultimate aim in the creation of man was that man will host God. In the creation of man, the intention of the Almighty was that this body will be a host for spirit. And that is why there is a contention between light and darkness for the body of man. So the body is created to be a host. So it, every child of God who is not conscious of the relational work with the Holy Spirit is not conscious or is not aware of the finished work or the ultimate purpose of God for his life or for a life. So God's ultimate purpose is that man will host him. And you must know that the capacity for a man to host more of God is not by the Spirit. Tell your neighbor, say the capacity of a man to host the Holy The capacity of a man to host God is not by his Spirit. It is by his body. Because the body was made to contain him. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5b, he said, a body as he prepared for me. So Jesus Christ coming in the flesh by the Holy Ghost was conceived of a virgin. And when he was conceived by a virgin, this virgin took in a conception supernatural. This body was prepared without fault because the divinity of Christ himself. So Christ the divine is coming upon Christ the body. And at baptism, as he was deep into the water, the Bible said, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Who is the Lord? He himself is the Lord. So the spirit of the Lord came upon the body of the Lord. In the New Testament, we read of a man who was born full of the Holy Ghost also, John the Baptist. So John came in the body to host the spirit of Elijah. So John was no different from Elijah. So John is Elijah. Somebody hearing that now? So you, John is what? Elijah. He came to host. The body only came through a process. So no spirit has a permission to exist on earth without a body. However, the body came, but no spirit has a permission to host, to be hosted on the earth without a body. So you must understand that your body is a host. And this is the emphasis that lies on sanctification. This is the emphasis that we cannot deprive of ourselves of living sacrificially unto God. Because the more you yield your body to a kind of spirit, that's the spirit that takes preeminence within you. So the Holy Spirit 
It is a gift of God to the church. Only believers have access to the Holy Spirit. Only children of God have access. It is by Him we call Him Father. It is through the Holy Spirit we call Him Father. God Himself fractionalizing Himself into men. God Himself fractionalizing Himself into men. So we, by the Holy Spirit, become God men. It is by the Holy Ghost that we become God men, or what we call men of God. An increase in God is to be measured by an increase in the gift of His presence. An increase in God is to be measured by the gift of his presence. Wherever the spirit of God is, there is liberty. And the liberty of God is all-encompassing. It goes beyond spiritual liberty of your body alone, but the liberty of everything that pertains to your life and godliness. Everything that pertains to your life and godliness. The liberty that comes upon you. That means that as a believer, as a child of God, God's liberty coming upon you. Speak over everything. So the more you experience the freedom of the spirit man, the more you experience the freedom of the spirit of God within the container. All the treasures of heaven that is locked up within you also have expression. Before the devil will attack a thing in the natural, that thing is already destroyed or attacked spiritually. So if your finances is being troubled, it is not hard work that will lose it. Is somebody hearing something here? Until a spirit is backing you up and causing a liberty of the spirit, then will you have the capacity to turn one to ten? Then will you have the capacity to turn 10 to 100? Because you have already obtained the spirit of the thing, not just the thing. When you obtain the thing and you don't obtain the spirit of it, those things will vibrate off your hands. The gift of his presence. An increase in God is to be measured by an increase in the gift of his presence. An increase in God is to be measured by an increase in the gift of his presence. So the more you are not to look at the physical, somebody say don't look at the physical. Your eyes, any man that will gain gold by God. Agai chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. He said, the silver is mine, the gold is what? Mine. See, and the Lord of hosts. So any man who will gain gold by God, will first of all seek God to gain gold. Every obstacle to gain gold was actually put in there by God because they are his. There are those that have obtained the things of God, but they do not have God. That cannot be disputed. There are those that are controlling the things of God, but they don't have God. So a man can be gifted, but do not have the gift of God's presence. Is somebody getting that? You can be gifted, but you do not have the gift of God's presence. Now, when you are gifted and you lack the gift of His presence, whatever you do, whatever you are doing, ends in time. Ends in time. There is no translation. There is no translation into eternity. Everything will end in time. That's why the Bible says, Do not be envious of the wicked, for there is an end. The expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. So in the quest for a believer to manifest spiritually, and translate into the material world. 
do not be envious of the wicked for there is an end the expectation of the righteous shall not be what cut short Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 it said for by him were all things created that are in heaven that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or powers all things were made all things were created by him and for him and it's before all things is before all things and by him all things consist 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 the increase in life is to be measured by the increase in his presence that's why the bible said i wish above all things that thou mayest what prosper and be in health as thy soul prospered so the prosperity of a soul that is not a measurement with the prosperity of the soul will make you end up as lucifer lucifer's fall was as a result of the prosperity of his soul of his being without the presence of god god was out of the equation of his prosperity the blessing that god gave unto solomon was not vanity tell your neighbor say god does not give vanity god doesn't give vanity what becomes vanity in life is when the blessing does not contain God. When God is not in the nuclei of the blessing. When God is not in the center of the blessing, it becomes vanity. So Solomon never made a comment of vanity until he was bereft of God, until he was without God. The gift of his presence is for his children. The gift of his presence is for the believers. This is what enables our doings, our walking to transcend unto eternity. So don't be surprised in the world. There are many that are with the gift of God. There are many that are controlling millions. And it is God that gives them. Amen? They are, they are worldly people. They are not even believers. If you read the book of Isaiah chapter 45. Cyrus the king was a Gentile king. Cyrus the king was not an evil king. Cyrus the king was a pagan king. Is somebody hearing that? He was a pagan king. And the Bible said, Cyrus, in whom my hand are holding, and I will open the tulip gates ajar. So the tulip gates are the gates of wealth, of the spiritual and the physical. When you read that scripture down, you will understand this thing. He will lose the loins of king at his will. So God was using a Gentile to dominate the affairs of the world. His ways are past finding. His knowledge is past searching out. You are not a tool in the hands of God. You are a child. Is somebody hear, hearing that? So there are tools in the hands of God and there are children that actually belong to the kingdom. When a tool is being used, when the mission is accomplished, it is dumped. The gift of his presence is a product of relationship. It is a product of a relationship. So your relationship with God is what brings you into the realities of God. Your relationship with God brings you into the realities of God. It brings you into the more of God. The more and the more, the more and the more of God. 
true relationship. Shout fire. Now, having this understanding, you know that God exists as the omnipresent. Someone say omnipresent. Is omniscient and is omnipotent. Is omniscient and omnipotent. When a man begins to have a relational walk with God, when a man begins to walk with God, these three possibilities, God begins to share the reality with you. God shares the reality of his omnipresence. He shares the reality of omnipotent. He shares the reality with you. And this may be strange to you. It doesn't totally make a man to be everywhere. Is somebody hearing that? It doesn't totally make a man to be what? Everywhere. But God shares this capacity with men who through relationship have grown up in him. Paul was to go on a mission in Macedonia. Before he went on the mission in Macedonia, he had a revelation. And in that revelation, the people of Macedonia were calling on him. Say, come to us. Come to us. In that revelation. Now, somebody may say it's a dream. No. It's actually a teleportation. It's actually what? A teleportation. The mind of the people have received him because God took him into the land before time. God took him to the place before time. Before time, God took him there. So when he appeared here, there was already an acceptance on ground waiting for him. There are times that people have called me sometimes and said, Pastor, I saw you in my dream. You prayed for me and I was healed. By the time I woke up, I was healed. I will. There are people who have had that encounter. Not one, not two. Even people I've not met before or probably they've, they've heard about me or they've... There are people who have come into this church who said, I came to tell them to come. I was in a camp to pray some years back, and as I entered the camp, as I was just about settling down, a young lady ran to me. And when she ran to me, she said, you are the reason I've not left this camp for the past three days. I was like, are you confused? Said, you are the reason I've not left this camp for the past three days. He said, I saw a man in a vision and immediately I saw your clothes. I knew you were the one. He said, this is exactly the clothes you wore. And God said, only you can deliver me. Then I said, well, you know, man must be careful. So I said, okay, no problem. Join the queue. There were two people that came with me to the prayer. So I said, join. And Believe you me, when God began to deal with her issue one after the other, it was obvious that this woman has been cheated like the woman with the issue of blood who have paid sacrifices here and there and came out with nothing. When I prayed with that lady, few months after that, she got a job with the federal government. Few months later, she married. Now, it is through the instrumentality of the Spirit and ascension that God takes us into places. There are people who will leave the church for months and after some time they will come back by an instruction. God, I saw you came to call me. There are those who have even been blinded by the devil who will come back. And why? Why ministry to them? 
the, the demonic forces will be reacting against. Say, you came to draw her, but we did not take physical step to go and call them. So even unto salvation, you were called spiritually. Is somebody hearing that? You were called spiritually. There are people here who feel that nobody preached to them before they gave their life to Christ. You were preached to by the Spirit. You were interceded, even if they did not preach to you, you were interceded for. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, he said, but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the, thing, the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. Somebody say every man's conscience. In the sight of God, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. In the sight of God, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. In the sight of God. In verse 3, he said, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. The gospel is to appeal to the conscience of men. Is to appeal to the conscience of men. And whenever the devil wants to rob people of receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ, of receiving the word of God, he makes the conscience to be hardened. Not only by sin, but by offenses. Somebody say offenses. There are offenses, speculations. There are people who will sit down under your ministration for one year, 365 days, but their hearts will never be settled as to agree with what you are saying. Is this one, does, did God call him or not? If God did not call him, let God call you. If you can waste 365 years or 65 days of life to ascertain the calling of one man, you need to be called yourself. Is somebody hearing that? <laughs> you need a, a special calling for yourself. And I tell you, this is the this is what affects the conscience of men from receiving the realities of God. Until it is taken like a baby, you remain in one spot until you accept that is with, with that which is freely given. Life is wasted in many ways. And many people are not conscious of it. We commend ourselves unto the conscience of men. So it is by the conscience of men that they receive the things of God that is being passed unto them from the table of God. God is omnipresent, God is omniscient and omnipotent. We saw in the book, in the book of Acts, how God took Philip. Philip went and ministered in a strange land, and he was teleported back to where he was. Philip was teleported back to where he should be. Because God shared his omnipresence with him for time. Is somebody hearing that? God shares his omnipresence with him in that moment. One of the one of the works of the devil is to make man to contain the things of God, to contain the realities of God, and never be able to dispense. Never be able to come to the reality of the things of God that is contained. How is the gift of God, the gift of God's presence, how is it revealed unto us? Number one, it is revealed by his word. Tell your neighbor, say by his word. The gift of his presence is revealed to us by his word. So the Bible says he sent his word. He sent his word and his word healed them and deliver them from their destruction. So, the, the word of God is divine by himself. 
the word of God is alive by himself. The reality that God is God is by his word. Is somebody hearing that? God is not God by his power. God is God by his word. In Psalm 132 verse 2b. He said, thou hast exalted thy word above all thy name. Above all thy name. As powerful as he is. So the revelation of God to you, the presence of God to you, is in the measure of the revelation of who he is that has come to you. He sent his word to Jacob and his word lighted up a nation. So, by one man's revelational knowledge, by one man's encounter with God, a generation, a nation is lighted up. Beware, when a man said, God said to me, God doesn't speak much, God answers much. When a man said, God said, God said, God said, check the materiality of what God has said. Is somebody hearing something here? If I told you God said, it is God said, and it comes to pass. If I said this is what God said, God said, and if there's nothing God is saying, we wait till we hear. We can never be tired of waiting because God is not in time. When His word comes to a man, it commands time to obey Him. The word of God that comes to you for time makes you recover time that is lost. And you will be like a dreamer to yourself. To yourself first, you will, you will be like a dreamer. You, you will wonder if you actually lost time in the first place. If his word cannot recover destiny, then it is a waste of time. God, give us himself through his word. And this is the, the reason why the instrumentality of faith cannot be de-emphasized. De because everything that is being revealed to you will be measured by faith unto fulfillment. Whatever God says to a man goes beyond the man, goes beyond his lifetime. So God's word to a man transcends beyond one man. There is never a man that has a promise from God in the scripture that it ended with that man. Whatever God starts with a man has a transgenerational effect. The Bible said in Psalm 20 verse 30, it said, a seed shall serve him, it shall be accounted unto him for a generation. So the effect of a seed, the effect of a man serving God, hearing God, Walking with God, Psalm 22, verse 30, a seed shall serve him, it shall be accounted unto him for a generation. So everything that you do in God has a transgenerational effect. Just as the way that darkness has a transgenerational effect, the effect of life has much more. In Psalm 119, verse 105, it said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Bible said in verse 130, it said, The entrance of thy word giveth what? Light. It brings the presence of God. The entrance of thy word. So the, the word is, is given, it's a revelation. So it has to be given. So you may read it. But it's not given. Tell your number say you may read it, but it's not given. You may hear it, yet it's not given. <laughs> you may hear, yet it's not given. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. He said, This word was preached unto us and unto them. The word of his faith, the word of his power. This word was preached unto us and unto them. But the word profited them not. Why? It was not given to them. Some that do not even have anything to do with the gathering. 
they got something. This is the case of the woman with the issue of blood. There were people who were walking until Jesus will sit down. There were people who were waiting until Jesus will have contact with their face before they will now begin to hear what Jesus has to say. But a woman has already accepted the workings of Jesus from afar. And he said, only if I touch. There are people that said, if I can just step my leg. So she wasn't waiting until Jesus would pay attention to only her. She knew that there are many people that are trying to draw the attention of the divinity. The Syrophoenician woman brought us her daughter. And let me let you know what Jesus said to her. It is unrighteous to give that which belongs to a child to a dog. So invariably, Jesus is calling a Syrophoenician woman a dog. Calling her a dog. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2, he said, May the grace and peace of God be multiplied in you. May the grace and peace of God be multiplied in you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the knowledge of God comes by his word. The knowledge of God comes by his word. So when God wants to actually multiply you in grace, when if you must be multiplied in grace, there must be a revelatory knowledge of him that comes to you. John 1 16, he said, And of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace. So the grace is multiplied through the knowledge and we become fuller. So there are measures, somebody say measures, there are measures to this grace. There is a grace that comes to prayer. There is a grace of prayer and supplication. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10. There is a grace of prayer and supplication. There is a grace that comes through the word of God. cannot keep his presence. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 He said, wherever the word of the king is, there is what? Power. If a rich man gave you his word, you don't doubt it. You bank on his riches. Shot fire. If a great man gave you his word, you bank on his word. In fact, you collect credit based on his word. Is somebody here, sir? <laughs> he has promised that he's going to do this for me, so I don't have fear. When God gives a man his word, when he either it's come prophetically, either it comes by revelation in the word of God either it comes directly through the administration of the Holy Spirit himself let me tell you what however God gave you his word it is not an elimination of the challenges of life it is not to eliminate the challenges of life no but it is that which you are going to use to confront somebody say confront you confront darkness the reality of this world. You confront it. You confront it. You confront challenges. Luke 21 15. He said, I will give you a mouth and a wisdom that your adversary cannot what? Gainsay. They can't gainsay you not because you know how to speak. The Bible says, how forcible are right words. But what do I to your argument? The word that I write are his word that he has spoken to you. He said, let the word of God dwell in you richly. So it is not just something you are trying to believe. It is a conviction. 
you are able to live with it and go with it and force your way into it. You press into it by prayer. You press into it by fasting until there's a reality, a tangibility. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should lie. He can never, never, never fail me. 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 Oh, yeah. God is not a man. Oh, God is not a man. He should lie. God is not a man. Oh, God is not a man. That he should lie. He can never, never, never fail me. 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 Yeah. That is not a man. God is not a man. That he should lie. He can never, never, never fail me. 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 The gift of God's presence comes to us through men. Somebody say men are God's gifts. Men are God's gifts. Men are God's gifts. One of the key things you need to realize that is going to help your destiny is to know the man God sent to you. Tell your neighbor, say, no, the man God sent to you. Not everyone will play an important role in your life. Not everybody is important to your life. Not everybody is important to your destiny. The gift of men does not mean plenty people. The gift of men does not mean what? There are men like nations. So there are men, there are families where there are ten. But one person cannot rise for another one. There are families that are ten. That if they have anything to do, if they have anything to do, nobody, nobody can rise up. Another family has to bail them out. There are men like nations. And what, one of the things that will determine your speed is having a man that will play the important role in your life on time. Recognizing the men that God has sent to you. It is this man that will be angels. It is this man that will be what? Every time the God appeared, he appeared in the form of angels. In the plane of Mamre, Genesis chapter 18 and verse 1, and the Bible said, and God visited Abraham in the plane of Mamre, in the heart of the afternoon. And the Bible said, in the next verse, it said, and three what? Angels. Three angels means three messengers. Is somebody hearing something here? Three angels means what? 
three messengers. But the Bible said God visited. There are issues of life that make us ask, where is the presence of God? Where is God in the equation of your life? Where is God in the calculation of your life? It is because the man God sent is missing. There is a missing in action of the one that is sent to you. One of the things that caused the arrival of just of Job on time, that in the days of his youth, he was a wealthy man, was because Job found a man whose destiny is attached to him. The making of Joshua was not because of the strength of his prayer and fasting. But the ministry of Moses. Joshua was given to Moses as a servant. Is someone hearing that? Joshua grew up in the house of Moses as a servant. He was given to him. The gift of God's presence is in men. When God sends a man into your life, it is through that man that God appears. Genesis 45 verse 7. Joseph himself saying to his brethren, and for this purpose God sent me forth. For this purpose God sent him forth so that he will be a pathfinder. He will be a way maker. And when the children of Israel were about to be wiped out, they were about to be wiped out by famine. They were about to be wiped out by lack. But the man God sent forth was there to bail them out. Jacob with all his anointing, with all his anointing, his anointing could not produce food. It was his child that traveled abroad that brought food. With all his encounters, cannot produce food. You must, you must have men that God has placed in your life, and you must know them. Bible writer said, God speaking, he said, and I will give you a pastor after my own heart. So even a man of God, you can't choose your man of God. Any decision that makes you to choose your man of God, you are choosing your suffering. You are choosing your results. You are choosing your whatever happened to you, you, are, you chose it. So you, you must, it's a deep inquiry. Of the spirit is a deep soul searching. There are men that are answered to prayer. Moses was an answer to the prayer of the children of Israel. Moses was what? An answer to their prayer. Listen to me very well today. So that you will not ask where is God. Moses was an answer to prayer to the children of Israel. Somebody will have said, maybe God will have used another person. They will wait another time. They will wait another season. They will wait another time. They will wait another season. They will wait. It took God time to raise you. Tell your neighbor, say, it took God time to raise you. Don't waste. Don't, don't, don't let your generation suffer. One of the things that make me keep going, even when it is not easy, when it is not easy in the flesh, I would tell myself, I said, I don't want to be betray the trust of many. I don't want to betray the trust of many. It is easy for people to betray me than for me to betray them. I don't want to betray the trust of many. The Bible said, the eyes of the Lord searched to and fro for a man to stand in the gap 
For a man to stand in the gap. A man to stand in the gap. A man to stand in the gap in your life may be the man that wants to give you money for business. A man to stand in the gap for you may be the man to introduce you to a new company. A man to stand in the gap may be a man to lift you into your next position. Even for the throne of the house of Israel, there was a Jonathan for David. God has finished all the chemistry and set up. He took him to the throne to play an instrument for a mad king. So the Holy Ghost will have been ministering to him. This is your place. I only called you to come and see it. There are people who have, who have seen the place that belongs to them by revelation, by prophecy. They have seen the place that belongs to them, but there's no man to put them there. There was a man waiting by the pool of Bethsaida for 38 years. And because there was no man, somebody say no man. There was no man to just carry him and put him inside. Genesis chapter 2 verse 5. The Bible said the earth and the trees of the land, the plantings, everything was in the earth. But because there was no man to till the ground, God caused it not to rain. So the ground was barren because there was no man. The ground was barren because there is no man. God will raise men for you. I said, you will not miss men. There are many people that God have raised for you now. Your heart is against them. The devil has completed his assignment of turning you against. The heart is against. The mind is against. You don't talk again. This is the works of the devil. It is not the men. It is not the men. It is the works of the devil. There are men who have carried generational, generational deliverance, generational blessing. They only transformed it into a family blessing. They only ended up as family men, but they carried the liberation of generations. It took a process of 14 years of hard labor and poverty for Jacob to discover that Israel was inside him. Somebody hearing something here. It took a suffering of what? 14 years, a breaking for Jacob to know that Israel was locked inside him. He's not actually Jacob. He is called Yahweh delivers Israel. It's called Israel. Yahweh that delivers was inside him. Yet, for 14 years, all your breaking is to cause a transgenerational blessings. All your suffering is to make you see the possibilities of God that extend beyond me, that extend beyond I, that extend beyond myself. Is somebody getting something here? All these things is to make you if you have been a Christian for 25 years, 30 years, 20, 10 years, 15 years, and your prayer does not go beyond me, if you have not forgotten me in your 10 years, 15 years of journey as a believer, you've not recognized what is locked up inside you. You've not found the purpose of the eternity that is locked up inside you. Eternal life is out of it that believers shall flow what? Rivers of living water. You are a life giver. You are not looking for life. I don't know if someone is getting something. Saviors shall arise out of Zion. They shall join the mount of Edom. So when God begins to bless you with one error, it's not for food alone. It's not for you to be able to make ends meet. These are good things. But I tell you, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. I tell you, when God blesses a man, what you will be doing for your immediate family is a, is a joke to what you will be doing outside because the effect of your destiny it goes beyond everything that concerns you is already taken care of I pray that you will ascend into this realm where your family will not have prayer point again I don't where your family will not have a prayer point because you are not your own you have become a property of God there is a place for that 
I am a property of God. You don't have family prayer. There's no prayer point. There's no prayer point. God, we didn't walk into this realm carelessly. We consciously entered it. It's the consciousness of faith. The reality. A man of God saw me seven years ago when he looked at me. He said, not all young men will do what you are doing for God. He said, the thing you are doing for God, he said, young men like you will buy car, will build house and enjoy themselves. I spent more than one million dollars to buy instruments. We never raised offering in this church for buy one instrument when we started. We bought everything before we started. The man doesn't even know what I was doing physically. He only by prophecy he was speaking to me. We entered into the realities of God consciously. And the Bible says, God is not unrighteous, that he will forget your labor of love. So there's nobody who can stand up and say, I'm the one sponsoring him. Immediately you say that you'll be replaced. Only God has capacity to sponsor you. Two men. It took him 14 years to realize what was locked inside him. Until then. It took Sarah several years of barrenness until she, for her to even believe the word of God, her, her faith was helped. Her faith was helped when the word came to her that a child will come out through this your dead womb. Her faith had to be helped. Joseph was a gift of God and a gift of God's presence. A gift of God's presence. Just imagine the calamity that will fall on the house of Israel if Joseph was not sent forth ahead of them. So, you may be wondering why it is at this time for you when you are the one. You are the only one. You are the one and only that is serving God in your family. It is because you are sent forth. It is because what? You are sent forth for your people. And let me tell you, if there is a man that will not give up, he will surely see God. Light bringers are not ordinary men. Light bringers, they pass through fire to light their own torch. And they will be a light to men. So your sacrifices cannot be like their sacrifices. There's no shame that's happened in your family. You may be the reason why nobody has died in the past 25 years in your family. That little prayer of yours, that intermittent fasting you're always doing, it may be the reason why the devil has not capsized the vehicle of the family. There are people that their family, every two, two years, they die. Oh, you've not heard. They, there is nothing they can do because there is no man at the gate who speak to the enemy. There is no man at the gate who speak to the enemy. What have you come for? There is no road here. You are a gift to your world. There are many husbands that would have died if not for the wife that is given as a gift. The Bible said, he that findeth a wife has found a good thing and obtained favor. Favor is a gift from God. You do nothing to be favored. And obtain it favor from the Lord. And obtain it favor from the Lord. There are many husbands that are, they are like a crown to their wife. See, the day that man entered your house, your family story changed. The shame they will have seen, the pain they will have passed through by him and by his prayers, by his presence lives are being altered. Stories are being changed. The gift of men is the gift of his presence.
Have you not read the scripture? The glory of a king is in the people. The destruction of the prince is in the lack of it. So when a prince is destroyed, it's because he lacks men. If you must measure the presence of God, measure the presence of men. Is somebody hearing something here? Moses speaking to Reuben. He said, let Reuben live and let his men not be few. Because there was a curse upon Reuben that there would be few nations. So whatever makes a man to have few helper. I mean, somebody say few helper. Hey, few helper is when, when there is a need of 100,000 and you are not having 5,000. Only one person is giving you 5,000 out of 100,000. Then there is a few, there, there are few men. Somebody say few men. You will need help. Don't wait until calamity before you realize that. Don't wait until there is a need. You will need help. 400 valiant men help David never to lose a war. 400 valiant what? Men help David not to lose a war. 600 men Abraham had. He went into the battle of Chedorlaomer. Five nations he conquered within seven days. Five nations. One man. The gift of men is a gift of his presence. The gift of men is a gift of his presence. Your labor is not the only thing that should make you. It should just be part of the thing. When you want to measure if God is with you, check, weigh, measure the favor of God coming to speak in the project, in the assignments of your life. Measure it. Measure it. When there is a need, what speak? Is it struggle? When there is a need, what speak? Is it depth? No man by himself will be able to change his destiny. No man. This is where the place of God cannot be eradicated. It cannot be reduced. It cannot be maligned. Let any man run the way he likes. There is a place you will begin to look for God. And if the vacuum is too big, you will have to wait for the time. Love is a command. Relationship is a choice. You must be choosing and intentional in following who God has given to you. You must understand that Elijah was not given to Elisha alone. There were many sons of the prophet. And I can tell you they were more than 100. Tell your neighbor say they were more than 100. In 2 Kings chapter 2, Elijah fed 100 men with 10 men food. Have you read that scripture? Second Kings chapter 2, verse 40. He fed 100 men with 10 people's food. And who were those men? They were the sons of the prophet that he inherited from his father, Elijah. So, the sons of the prophet that Elijah was given as a gift, they were more than 100. But only one man actualized the gift of the presence that was in Elijah coming unto him. The Bible said the mantle of Elijah fell on the ground. The Bible did not say the mantle of Elijah fell on Elisha. So if all of them were there, they would have shared the mantle. You can be in the house and not be present. There is a realm that there are people that are ascending higher into a realm. There are people now, they are still in their kitchen as I'm talking like this. The realm of their kitchen has caps and have caged their heart. It is what we are going to eat after this service. The devil has caged them inside the pot before they leave the house. People are not ascending spiritually. That's why there can be no transformation. Shame has caged some people now. Is the worry of how to bring out their 15 era notes as offering. If God does not accept you, you can't even take your offering. So why are you dying because of offering? The gift of men. The gift of God's presence is revealed through the gift in men. Tell your neighbor, say the gift in men. I can't hear you loud enough. Can I hear you loud enough? The giftedness of men 
is a revelation of the gift of God's presence. The giftedness of men is a revelation of God's presence. The giftedness of men around you. There were men who were craftsmen, who were crafty. There were men who were crafty in handing of the sword. There were men who were crafty in building that God gave unto Nehemiah. And as Nehemiah was building the temple, what happened? What happened? The Bible said they held the sword in their hand, in their right, in their left hand, and they were building with their right hand. When God wants to increase a man, he causes him to have multi-talented men around him. It doesn't give him busy body. You will go to somebody's house and you will stay there for two hours. That man is not a gift to you. Three hours. The talk doesn't bring money. It doesn't build future. It doesn't... You are not learning anything. The gift in men reveals God's presence. So the giftedness of men is a gift to us. When God gives you men, you must know the giftedness that is in them. Because there are two purposes. One, you may be the one to make them actualize their gift. Or realize their gift. And you may be the one to benefit from their gift. You do not reap where you sow. You reap what you sow. You don't reap where you sow. You reap what you sow. The problem with men is that they want to reap where they sow. If you want to reap where you sow, you will be in bitterness. It is not possible. It is not possible to reap where you sow. Always. And you will not enter into bitterness. Because there are places you will sow that there are other seeds that will choke that seed. <laughs> the devil has sown something in them that even when your own seed germinate, they will tell you, say, now you be God. What thing you do for me? Whatever a man does for you, he's sharing a part of his life. He could have well have done it for somebody else. Or he could have well not do it at all. So when you hear people tell you that that thing you did, they did not really take it as something. It shows the kind of person they are. The kind of seed that has been planted in them. Ungratefulness is a seed of the serpent. One of the things that God did is that when this art was originally created, Satan was the prince of the world. Somebody hearing something here? Satan was the prince of the world. He was the one that was sent to the creatures. To the creatures. He was the light bringer to these creatures. But if he had actually appreciated and is grateful eternally to God, he would not arrogate the glory that is meant to God to go to him. When Satan began to arrogate the glory that is meant for God to himself, that is when he became an enemy of God. It is not humility. When people thank you, receive it. Is somebody hearing that? And give it to God. When they say thank you, don't say don't worry. No, worry. Oh, I don't get it. Worry! Don't tell me don't worry. Worry. They say, thank you. He says, God bless you. Give God the glory. It's, it's fake humility. You will teach them to be ungrateful. The giftedness in men is a gift of God's presence. I put this as number three. Why? Because men can be gifted, but they don't carry the presence of God. I hope you agree with me. 
So the giftedness of men is a gift of God's presence. Remember that God is omnipresent. That means God is present in everything. But God is not conscious in everything. God is present in everything, but God is not conscious in everything. God is present everywhere, but God is not alive or active everywhere. Listen, Genesis chapter 18. A sin unrepented was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. And by the decree of the watchers, a period has elapsed where judgment has to fall for the unrepented sin. So the watchers took the decree unto God. Genesis chapter 18. They took unto God the reality of what is happening in Sodom. And it was a dual mission. Somebody say a dual mission. You see the angels that came into the house of of uh, Abraham in Genesis chapter 18. They were still the angel that went to Sodom and Gomorrah. And the men rose up from thence and looked towards what? Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Verse 16. In verse 21, God speaking. Verse 20, God speaking. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because the sin is very grievous. Verse 21, he said, I will go down now and see. Repeat after me, say, I will go down now and see. So if God is everywhere, why has God not seen? If God is everywhere, why does he have to go down now and see? So God is everywhere, but God is not active everywhere. That is why God can forbid a thing and it still happen. Until the presence, somebody say the presence. Until the presence is activated, nothing will be done about what is happening. Until the presence is activated. Light is in this house. If there is no socket, you can't plug. Simple as ABC. But no power, nobody can dispute. Light is in the house. God is with you. There is no doubt about it. But where is the activity of God? There is what to do to activate the presence, the power of God. So God said, I will go down now and see. But everything that happened never happened behind him. Never happened behind him. But he had to go down and see. I said this so that I can tell you that men can carry the gift of God, but they do not have God. So, but however, when those men are given to you, it's the giftedness of this man that now becomes the gift of God's presence to you. Is somebody getting that now? He said, I will give you the treasures of darkness so God can make an unbeliever to sponsor your kingdom. He can make an unbeliever. It was not a good man that made, Phil, that made Joseph to become a prime minister. It was not a good man. Pharaoh himself was not a good man. Shot fire. The giftedness of men. So when you want to know if you have enjoyed the gift of his presence, check the giftedness of men around you. Check what? The giftedness of men. And when I say men, any man around you, the giftedness, the resourcefulness, the spiritual resourcefulness, the material resourcefulness of men around you is a gift of God's presence. It's a gift of God's presence. You are 35. You don't have person, somebody to call for 35,000. Shout fire. Somebody is not happy here. Because it's 35 years that I mentioned. <laughs> a 
Have you not heard that the child grew in wisdom and in what? Stature. He grew in favor with God and men. That is how to grow. To grow in the body is the least kind of growth. To grow in the body is the least kind of growth. When you want to growth must come from the realm of the spirit translating into the physical and if it is not obviously a spiritual growth I tell you it will be obvious to the world that you are growing in the body but you are not growing in the spirit you are growing in the body and you know what happens to SS growth ultimately you will trim it off ultimately you do what trim it off Ultimately, you trim SS growth off. May the Lord give us understanding. To receive the gift of receiving the gift of his presence. Quickly, let's run through this. Receiving the gift of his presence. Number one, an open heart, genuity. With their mouth, they draw near to me. But with their heart, they are far. Away with their mouth, they profess Christ, they profess God, but with their heart, they far from me. Heart, somebody say the heart, the heart. God's reign in a man must be from the heart of the man, it's not from the mouth of the man. And let me tell you, conditions will prove to you either you are in God is raining through your mouth or it's raining through your heart. Situations will find you out. Either God is raining through your mouth or it's raining through your heart. As the water answer to face, so does heart answer to heart. So when your heart answers to the heart of God, the heart of men will answer to you. Somebody get it something here. The book of Proverbs is as the water answer to the face and the face to the water. So when you look at the water, the water is answering your face, the face is answering your water. So you are seeing yourself like a mirror. So heart answer to heart. So as your heart is answering to God, the heart of men answer to you. Psalm 24, verse 1 and 2, he said, The heart is the Lord, the fullness thereof the world, and they that dwell in it. Whatever is blocking the heart of men to you today is broken. That amen is not strong enough. Every aspect of your life that needs an intervention of men Every man God have ministered to, but their heart have been blocked. Today, the gates are open. I say the gates are open. Blessings are in the hands of men. It takes a heart that answer to heart. Until the end, you must believe what God has said. There's no option. Unless satanic one. Your heart must answer to God. You cannot live contrary to God and be calling on God. You cannot carry a personal ambition and be looking unto God to, to sponsor your personal ambition. God to be sponsoring your... No. What have you sponsored about the things of God? What has God been able to sponsor through you? Shots fire. Number two. To increase in the gift of his presence, there must be an intentional desire to wait on God. There must be an intentional desire to fall down at his feet. You are no longer permitted to walk in power. Your power, your calculation, your joy and your rejoicing is not 
in what you can do, but what he's going to do through you. So a man will find it a thing of joy to live in his presence. Down at your feet, oh Lord, is the most highest. In your presence, Lord, I see your face. I see your face. Oh, for there is no Supernatural. Listen, when Jesus had five loaves of bread and two fishes, the Bible said he looked up to heaven. Amen. There are many of you who will never start a business until the capital you need come. Is somebody getting something here? Until the, the if it doesn't complete, you will not start because your eye is on the material. But it is the spiritual that produces the material. Spirituality becoming materiality. So Jesus looked up to heaven when he brought down his eyes. Even baskets were produced. It was not only bread. Even baskets were produced. Five loaves of bread, two fishes. The day God gave you one person, Put zero at the back, you become ten. Did they God give you ten? Put another zero at the back, they become hundred. God is infinite, it's not number. God is zero, 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 endless. Just you just put the number in front. He said unto Abraham, as far as your eyes can see. So it is your mind that cages, but when your eyes can see, it is possible. I tell you, there are capacities that are locked up by the mind of men. If a man enters a street and says, in the next five years, I become a distributor. If he walks towards it and his eye can see it, he will become, from a retailer, he will become a distributor. And let me tell you that God will be so gracious that he will bring opportunities. But fear cage men. Fear cage the mouth pick in the mind. Because the mind is not liberated. First Timothy 1 7. He said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Love. Of what? Power. And what? Sound mind. And opportunities, opportunities have slipped away because there is no love, there is no power and sound mind. So when you begin to dwell in the presence of God, the supernatural becomes a possibility. This is the making of the believer. This is where the believer must come to become what God wants him to be. I tell you. Unless a man humble himself under the mighty hand of God, the hand of God cannot rest on him. There is a humbling that must come to your finances. If you must say, God, be my sustainer. Whatever it commands you to do financially, you must do it. If you don't know that you actually depend on him, and you cannot live depending on him, you will keep depending on things. Is somebody getting that? One of the things that, when I started following my biblical principles, of Titan. The first year when I began to tithe, when I began to give consciously unto the things of God, 
I always have the mindset that God is going to increase or give me a better job than what I was doing. Tell them, I say, God's way and not your way. His thought and not your thought. So when I began to do it, I was joyously believing that, oh, a better job. So I was applying here, applying there, you know, believing him every other. But when one year came, the same job. Two years came, the same job, the same salary. Three years came, the same job, the same salary. Four years came, the same job, the same. And I asked God, how far? Then he said, son, sit down. He said, look back. When you began this journey, how does it used to be? And I remember that I used to do one year at job to pay for house rent. But since I began, no more one year at job. Somebody here or something. And I discovered that there are many times that we just want to do something good, just small thing. You will enter into debt to realize a dream. So you will be in the negative because you want to do something. But I now discover that from that moment, there are things that is not possible even by my savings. But I still get them done. How come? The grace that brings five loaves of bread and two fishes to feed 5,000. Your eyes have left the materiality into the spirituality. Then he said to me, he said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. I don't bless the way men think I bless. I don't increase the way men think I increase. He said, I give you wisdom to relate with people that are better than you. Then he now showed me again. He said, I've changed all the people around you. You were working with Riff Raff. You know nobody. Nobody knows you. He said, but now check the people I surrounded you with. And now have people who can come here and say, ah, Brother David, come to our house. And when they want to give you, they don't give you like a poor man. They give you like a blessed man. There is a giving that is given to a poor man. There is a giving that is given to a blessed man. Then I said, Lord, I'm sorry for looking at how I felt you should. This morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, the possibilities are with God in your life shall increase in the name of Jesus rise up on your feet if that is for Jesus make it better say my father my maker in the name of Jesus Christ as I begin to pray let your mighty presence rest upon my life pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Let your mighty presence rest upon my life. Rest upon my business. Pray better. Pray better. Pray better. Your mighty to presence. Upon my business, Sakia Kata, in the bush, you can take it. Let your mighty power get it. Rest of my mother, rest of my baby, a Katoko to our little super down and the most. In the most, Sakatuka, let the most good over the world, and Katoko to the mother, a Pakata, a bed of Sukutu, let the man in the Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. He said to Moses in Exodus 33, My presence shall go with you and will give you rest. The rest you can ever have in life is not in the presence of anything. Let your account be full of money. Let your, let your business be booming. If the presence of God is not with you, there's no rest. I tell you this. I've seen men that people think they don't have problem. That have everything in this world. Materials. That even when you, a believer, see, you want to exchange your life with them. 
But when you go in now, when you see what they are dealing with, you will tell God, I thank you for my life. You will tell God. There are those that don't know what is called poverty. There are those that they can afford three square meals for their village. The same way they have three square doctors. Three square doctors. The one that will check teeth in the morning is there. The one that will check blood in the afternoon is there. The one that will check heartbeats, either they will not die before morning is there. Unless his presence is with you, there's no rest. In the midst of the storm of life, you need the presence, the gift of those presence. There are projects of your life. There are challenges that you will be confronted with that will be bigger than your calculations. They can be bigger than your savings. You can come to the end of yourself at an important time of your life. But what gives you rest? The presence of God. I can tell you that one of the ways the devil defeats people out of the things of God, out of the project of God, out of the way that God has set their foot is when the gift of God's presence is absent. Jesus slept in the storm. Is somebody hearing that? Yes, sir. Jesus slept in the storm. It's because of the gift of his presence. Jonah was a carrier of God. That was why when the storm was boisterous, he said, carry me and throw me inside. Is somebody hearing something? Yes, sir. The storm that they are afraid of, say, you better throw me inside the storm. If not, you people will die. Those that know their God, those that carry their God, they are strong, able to confront the things that people are running from. I pray for you today that in the name of Jesus Christ, every storm of life that comes to you, they will not steal your peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. There are problems that make marriages scatter sudden. In this time, I've seen divorce like, like plague. Why? Because of what mouth we eat. Go to village, it's like play now. As if they don't eat in the village. Now grass is a job for village. Go to village means go and die in poverty. Is everything free in the village? <laughs> the only thing in the village is that they know how to eat one food. So you can eat garlic in the morning, garlic in the afternoon, garlic at night, garlic in the morning, garlic in the morning, garlic in the morning, garlic in the morning. One food. <laughs> the Lord will minister to you <laughs> in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> That your business will carry the presence of God. Amen. That your marriage will carry the presence of God. Amen. Everything that I've refused to grow in your hand, I breathe life to it. Amen. Small will become great. Amen. A hundred will become a thousand. Amen. A thousand, ten thousand. Amen. 10,000, 100 of thousand. Yeah. 100,000 shall be a million. Yeah. Tens of millions. Yeah. Hundreds of millions. Yeah. As this year is ending, I usher you into a new phase of destiny. Yeah. Spiritually, maritally, financially. Yeah. Yeah. By fire, a new phase open up. Yeah. Yeah. By fire, a new face open up. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give your hand to the Lord this morning. Amen. Jam your hands together for the living God.
Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Say neighbor, I carry the presence of God. Say it like you mean it. Say neighbor, I carry the presence of God. Stand forth to answer the servant of God and just pray for him. Say Father, increase him on every side. Increase him on every side. Are you praying for him or you are whispering? I can't hear your voices. Increase him, increase him, increase him, increase him on every side. For my sake, increase him. For my sake, increase him. For my sake, increase him. For, sake, increase him. for in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Hallelujah. Sit down like kings and queens. Testimony time. Testimony time. Testimony time. I'm only hearing the voice of our mama. Testimony time. Testimony time. Is your time now? Is your time now? Jam your hands together for the living God. Put your hands together as we call on Sister Comfort. Sister Comfort. Jam your hands together as we call on Sister Comfort. Jam your hands together, jam your hands together, jam your hands together. Hallelujah. Please, no special number goes straight to the point. Praise the Lord. Hey, Master Jesus. I give God the glory. Almighty God. What God do for me yesterday. I thank God. Because when I start. Jam your hands together, jam your hands together, jam your hands together. Keep jamming your hands. We give God all the glory. We give God all the glory. We give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Since thanking God for the child wedding ceremony which went well successfully. Jam your hands together. Jam your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, ma. Celebrate the Lord, celebrate the Lord, celebrate the Lord. Amen. Join your hands together for Sister Blessing. Sister Blessing, where are you? Join your hands together for Sister Blessing as she's coming out. Please make it snappy, Sister Blessing. Join your hands together till she reach here. Join those hands together. No special number. Go straight to your points. Thank you, ma'am. Remove the mic from my mouth, please. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Judge, praise, Pastor Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For my life, for my family. The devil came this morning. The 
did not want to see, he did not want us to, to come this, this, this program today. But I give God all the glory. God passed them. This morning, around 5 o'clock, my baby started running temperature. We think that it's a small case, not knowing that the thing want to enter as a convulsion. Before you know it, the baby seized. It did not want, it did not breathe in again. It did not, it just seized all in body. In daddy just rushed, started praying. We start praying. I thank God that God come and come into the prayer point immediately. Come at a time and give me the victory. I carry my baby and come into this place. Glory be to God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Your testimony is permanent in the name of Jesus. I have a testimony to be read here from Miss Leonard Grace. She's thanking God for adding another year to her age. Can you celebrate the Lord? Can you celebrate the Lord? And also from our brother Edmond. I am thanking God for his faithfulness over my life and that of my immediate family. I have experienced tremendous favor. Every